Sexologists assert that the physiology and anatomy of female sexual organs are purely understood, but female sexual embryology and anatomy are always described in human anatomy textbooks. Female sexual physiology was described uh, in Dickinson's textbooks in 1949 and by Master and Johnson in 1966. Although Lacour wrote in 1990, the clitoris, like the penis, was for two millennia both a precious jewel and a sexual organ, and before 1905, no one thought that there was any other kind of female orgasm than the clitoral sort. The distinction between clitoral and vaginal orgasm is not correct from a scientific point of view, because vaginal orgasm is a term invented by Freud in 1905. The vaginal orgasm is only a theory. Lacker wrote that in 1905, Sigmund Freud rediscovered the clitoris, or in any case the clitoral orgasm, by inventing its counterpart, the vaginal orgasm. So after 400, perhaps even 2,000 years, there was all of a sudden a second place postulated from which women described sexual pleasure. In 1905, for the first time, a doctor claimed that there were two kinds of orgasm and that the vaginal sort was the expected norm among the adult women. Freud knew that the natural center of the female erotic pleasure was the clitoris and that this one was culturally in competition with the necessary center of the pleasure of the woman, the vagina. Freud himself underlines that biology has to recognize the clitoris, uh, in the clitoris a real substitute of the penis. The vagina doesn't have an anatomical structure that can cause an orgasm. Until now, no scientist and no anatomy and neurology textbook demonstrated any vagus nerve termination in the vagina and in the cervix uterine. The genitosensory uh, component of the vagus nerve is only an hypothesis. The same thing we have to clarify regarding the G-spot. The G-spot is actually an hypothesis. Grafenberg, in 1950, hasn't discovered any G-spot. In his article, he describes the role of the urethra in female orgasm and not the role of the vagina. Grafenberg described some cases of female and male urethral masturbation and the corpus spongiosum of the female urethra. Analogous to the male urethra, the female urethra also seem to be surrounded by erectile tissues, like the corpora cavernosa. Grafenberg writes that the intraurethral glands could only release a fluid that is not urine to the orgasm. But he didn't report an orgasm of intraurethral glands. In fact, the female prostate doesn't have an anatomical structure that can cause an orgasm. Grafenberg also writes, the restriction to the vaginal, va vaginal orgasm, however, doesn't give the true picture of female sexuality. The, the woman in top posture is more stimulating when the erotogenic parts come in contact better. The intercourse from the back of the woman is the most natural one, and the female genitals have to be higher than the other parts of her body. The entrance to the uh, rectum can also become an erotogenic center. <coughs> Orgasm could be achieved with a finger in the anus and the penis in the vagina. Cunnilingus leads to a more complete orgasm. The erectile structures are the same in female and in male, and the clitoris is equivalent only to a part of male penis. The male erection is equivalent to the erection of the female erectile organs. Some sexologists use the term bulbs of the clitoris, clitoral urethra, clitoral vagina, but from an embryological and an anatomical point of view, these terms are incorrect. The bulbs do not develop from the phallus, they don't belong to the clitoris. The female urethra doesn't go across the clitoris, and there's not a part of the vaginal wall which adheres to the clitoris. The correct term to indicate the whole female erectile organs should therefore be female penis. The orgasm is possible in every woman because it's caused by the female erectile and organs. And as a male, only one kind of, of orgasm exists, the female orgasm. The contemporary stimulation of the clitoris during the vaginal intercourse facilitates the female orgasm, especially during the first time. It's important that sexologists free people scientific notion and the use of a correct scientific terminology in describing female sexual anatomy and physiology. In sexual education, we should spread certainties for all women and not hypotheses.